I'm fairly confident I'm not going to offend anyone by saying this, but Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is not a particularly intelligent man. Some of you may use the term stupid, but he's kind of able to cover up how out of touch and foolish he is by only doing interviews with friendly outlets and kicking out more conservative independent media from his press conferences. But that sort of veil of somewhat professionalism and intelligence was recently cut through by independent journalist Kean Bextie and his assistant Cat Canada, who did a sort of impromptu ambush interview with the Prime Minister on a beach in British Columbia, where it was put on full display just how dumb he is. Like, he has very kind of just silly thoughts and you can tell just how much of a bubble he lives in because if you ran this by anyone they would be like no you're wrong never say that again or you're going to look like a complete moron but Justin Trudeau is actually under the impression that he works more than the average Canadian now I'm not going to play this entire interview the whole thing's like 13 minutes that he and Bexty put on his website the counter signal uh he's selling subscriptions for his website if you want to see the full interview I don't want to distribute anyone's good work when they went to all this effort to do an interview with the prime minister. So in the description below, if you guys are interested in watching the full thing, you can go click on the counter signals website there, but let's get into this a short clip from the interview that cat Canada, Keen Bexty's assistant had, uh, had released. Uh, she and her header here says Trudeau claims he works more days than the vast majority of Canadians. I guess he doesn't think a single mom who has to work two jobs because of groceries and rent prices have skyrocketed so out of touch and this is actually quite incredible like the man i like, just you know to put a fine point on it the man is legitimately this stupid and as you know, you know i work more days a week than the vast majority of canadians you've, you've actually here. taken hundreds of vacation days oh, last oh, year oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll no, no. sorry you can do the math glenn mcgregor did the math oh <laughs> my imagine citing glenn mcgregor a man i don't even think can do math as your source for how hard you work. Last year, you pointed out how many days I work as prime minister. This equivalent of working every single day of the week and Saturday and not taking any day off, not any any uh, uh, bank holidays, not two weeks of vacation, nothing. I work incredibly hard and I get to be dad with my kids with nothing else going on for 10 minutes. It, it's a pretty wacky interview overall. The the funny thing is that this is actually the first time Justin Trudeau has seemed somewhat like a human in the past probably five or six years because he sequesters himself so much from the regular average Canadian that he ends up talking like he's a consultant or like an AI generated program. He's just so fake all the time that in a certain sense, Keen Bexty actually made Justin Trudeau look somewhat good. Like he's a complete fool. He thinks he works more than the average Canadian. And the way that Glenn McGregor, who is an absolute Trudeau simp, the, the way that they came up with the idea that he works more than the average Canadian is that they're thinking that because he's the prime minister, as soon as he wakes up and goes down and has breakfast, that's him working. And as soon as he hits his uh, head, hits the pillow, now he's not working. I don't consider it real work to be at a couple meetings in the morning, you know, talking to a few dignitaries, having four hours off where you're just doing general office work and then going to a banquet at the end of the day. That's not all working hours. That's just what you got to do to be prime minister. That's like saying every politician is working all the time because they're talk constantly shaking hands with people, talking to constituents, posting things on social media. The man does not work hard, like some of the things Keen Bexy posted there. On one of these one of these years, he took like 90 days of personal time. In 2020, he still took like 42 days off. That's crazy. When was the last time that you just yeah, casually took 40 days off in a year? Didn't have to take a massive pay cut. It's not like Justin Trudeau missed a paycheck from taking time off. Plus, half the time when he's working, it's like going on like trips to like foreign countries, hanging out with people, going to like, you know, palatial ballroom events. Who actually considers that like hard work? It's necessary. I don't take that away. It's not like he's just doing this stuff for fun. A lot of it's, you know, building international relations and whatnot. But you're not working harder than the guy who's working 40 hours a week and then still has to come home, do housework and all this stuff. That's complete nonsense. But more to maybe even question the intelligence 
of the people who support Trudeau online, not just the people who vote for the liberals, but I mean like the big, big Justin Trudeau supporters online, I almost question their intelligence more than Trudeau himself. Because from this one interview, there was all of these leftists on social media who are now like freaking out and having an absolute aneurysm because Kean Bexty actually asked him questions as if it's just Justin Trudeau's right to never answer a single question from anyone who has a more hostile, you know, a hostile perspective, which you should. That's actually the great thing about American politics. Everyone has to answer a Fox News question or an MSNBC question, no matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Nobody just says, I'm only talking to these people, or you get excoriated. But in, in Canada, you can get away with it if you're on the left just saying, oh, I don't talk to your outlet. But here's a Markham Hislop saying, he's a political activist, not a journalist. Arrest him. Markham Hislop runs like a far left green advocacy organization that masquerades as a media company. And he's allowed to do that fully in his right. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. But the idea that, no, 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 it's Kean Bexty who's an activist, not a man like Markham Hislop who considers himself true neutral because he just considers his like a far left climate agenda to be just what everyone should believe in in Canada. Everyone who's a, a super a big ideologue thinks they're true neutral. They're the centrist person in the room. Yet this person, paranoid humanoid, saying this time he couldn't get away is exactly what a stalker would say. Traveling to find a politician on a family vacation is stalking, not journalism. Kean Bexty's a stalker. I feel sorry for his uh, exes if he has any. And it's some scary loser who can find PM Justin Trudeau. It, guys, it's not that hard to find Trudeau. Everyone knows if Justin Trudeau's on vacation, probably somewhere close to Tofino, you know, if he gets off a plane, there's like a giant entourage that's going to follow him around. And are we scared of Kean Bexty? Is Kean Bexty going to find, like, you know, going to like chase him down and tackle him? I don't think so. I think Trudeau can handle himself. You know, this is not exactly the U.S. where you got to be scared that anyone with a pen might go after the president or something like that. Uh, this person, Creek Pete. Too bad he didn't knock you the F out, you little runt. One day it's going to happen and you'll deserve it. Also, RCMP, do your job. Do what job? Not like, You're not allowed to ask, asking the prime minister questions? Like, these people are so flipping sensitive. That paranoid humanoid again. Who else thinks Prime Minister Justin Trudeau should give, have given Kean Bexty the Schwanigan handshake? Bexty isn't a journalist. He's a professional protester and a stalker who waylays people for likes and clicks. The funny thing, oh my goodness, he actually said, I stand with Justin Trudeau 2025. I can't wait for Justin Trudeau to lose the next election. Even though I believe Justin Trudeau should resign and let someone else be the prime minister, because in any Western country, we should expect that when someone's incompetent, that they let someone else take over. I do recognize there's nobody competent inside the Liberal Party, but it's kind of the thought that counts. But it is going to be quite glorious to watch him have to do a concession speech after losing this next election because all these people are so out of touch. And I want to see them just not be able to handle the fact that nobody likes the liberals. But what was even a weirder type of a response to this whole thing was some people on the right who were mad at Kean Bexty for doing this interview. Because like I said before, it actually kind of humanized Trudeau a bit. Not in a way that's going to win Trudeau any votes, but he seemed like a regular guy, a regular arrogant narcissist, but he didn't seem like an AI program. And now there are actually people who are trying to attack them for having done this interview. It, it's it's wild. I'm trying to find this here. This, this lady, Blonde Finn, Cat Canada has made it clear she's a globalist puppet. Kean has confirmed he bends over to the cabal too. Not shocked these two slaves were given the photo op job. Th there's an actual conspiracy theory that Cat Canada and some of these other people, like and Cat Canada and Keen Bexty, are working for Justin Trudeau because Justin Trudeau didn't look like he was made of AI, that this was somehow a bad job by Keen Bexty. If you are complaining about Keen Bexty doing what everyone's been demanding a journalist do for years, actually ask Justin Trudeau a real question. I think that you're just deluded. You're just delusional. You don't actually want things in Canada to get better. You like finding things to complain about. This is like the kind of more, they're not even really right. They're, they're not really on the political spectrum. They're just whiners. A lot of these people have very leftist type views as well, but they're just out here to complain about anyone who does their job. Here's Cat Canada responding to the person saying, beyond Cat Canada and the real Kingdom Bexty should be 
effing behind bars, F this S. That was them responding to a leftist. But then there's other there's like, like other people going after them. Again, go follow Cat Canada and Key and Bexty on X or any social media platforms. They do good work. Uh, so Cat Canada said, yes, Keen did a great job. It was so cool to film it. And this person, Frontier Jat, says, wow, you guys are feds all along. Feds? Like, it, it, again, this stuff is mind-boggling. Like, I said this to it, and I think this is a good way of summing it up. Uh, Cat Canada was sort of talking about this whole situation with people saying that she's, like, in league with Justin Trudeau. Because apparently if you ask Justin Trudeau actual hard questions like they did... Well, it's only because Justin Trudeau wanted you to do that, which means you're working for him if you do what everyone wanted people to do for years. So she says, went on a trip to try and get Trudeau to ask que answer questions, only to get a heap of abuse from people saying it's staged and they won't support independent media. Okay, watch CBC then. Then get your money away by they they get your money anyway by force. LMAO over a billion dollars a year. And then I responded to that saying, they are proving the CBC sucks by attacking you guys. It shows non-sterile media is much better than the rehearsed and boring way the CBC does things. Kean only made Justin Trudeau look better in the sense Trudeau didn't come off like bad AI for a second, even though he was still arrogant and, and uh, sensitive. And that is basically what happened there. Yes, Trudeau looked more human because he was actually not in a sterile media environment. He didn't look good. This isn't winning him any votes. But this is actually showing why the CBC is so bad. You can't possibly look good in a CBC interview because the whole thing is just staged. The entire thing is staged. And then when you do a non-staged interview like they did, you then get accused by idiots that the whole thing's staged. I want to show this post. This one is absolutely insane. Uh, that the, This one I'm responding to here. I'm going to scroll down and show it first. Uh, it's just people who go around calling themselves like Diagolon on uh, social media. If you're calling yourself Diagolon and you're like, I'm a proud member of Diagolon, that's cringe. Do not do that. Diagolon is some weird way of like men in their 40s to LARP as if they're like, you know, tough freedom fighters when they're not doing anything and they're mostly just sitting on live stream like they're 25 year old Twitch streamers. Anyways, but this Leia lady says, what are the odds that both these people are sat on a plane beside Christian Freeland in their lifetime? And because Kean Bexty and Kat Kanda had both been on a plane with Christian Freeland at some point, that means the whole thing is staged. Really? That, that's when they worked it out. They took a photo together on a plane and then they scheduled that they're going to do this impromptu ambush interview in a year. Like the one from Key and Bexty, they're still wearing masks. That was back in like 22 or like, yeah, like like mid-2022 uh, or early 2022. And then Kat ran into Freeland, I think like November or something like that, or sometime at the very beginning of 2024. That's when they worked out that they were going to do an interview with Trudeau to like what? Like expose Trudeau for being an idiot who thinks that he works harder than everyone else? I don't understand the conspiracy here, people. But this was my response, and I... I not trying to tour you guys through my social media too much, although you guys should also uh, follow me on social media. I'll throw a link in the description below if you guys want to follow me on X. But I said, wants a journalist to ask Justin Trudeau hard-hitting questions. Gets it. Quote, oh my goodness, these people are literally liberal agents. And I said, uh, then I went on to basically just say that, like, yeah, trust in Trudeau looked a little bit better than usual because he wasn't being interviewed by someone like Glenn McGregor. He wasn't being interviewed by someone like Lisa Laflamme or some other CBC, CTV, global news journalist who's asking him boring, who cares questions, and Justin Trudeau is giving them boring, who cares scripted answers. That's the only reason that anyone thinks that Trudeau somehow benefited from this. He didn't. He's going down the polls. You think that you, you think that Kean Bexty and Cat Canada would get paid? How much money do you would you have to get paid by Justin Trudeau to actually go through with something like this? Because think about how much media you could get out of just exposing the fact they tried to bribe you. You'd get be a millionaire and you could write a book on all this stuff if they tried to do that. This is where I have no patience for people who sit around whining and coming up with actual conspiracy theories when i say actual conspiracy theories i mean just actual nut bar stuff to justify attacking people on your own side kian's doing good work cat canada's doing good work same thing happens to ezra levant all the time i don't always agree with ezra 
Ezra generally does pretty good work, and you'll have people on the right attacking him because I don't know, like what would, what do you want Keen Bex to do? This whole thing's turning into a rant. I'm sorry, but all these people complaining at Keen Bex, what did you want him to do? Take it a screwdriver and stab Trudeau in the neck, and then it's a hard hitting interview. Unless he literally tackles the man, then it's not hard hitting enough. It was it was good work, and I and I even though I usually plug all my own stuff. Guys, in the description below, there's a link to the counter signal story from Kian and Cat Canada. If you guys are interested at all, go buy a subscription to their website. They do good work. Go like I, I you should support independent media. Support all independent media. We're all borderline broke in this country. So I do not have five flipping seconds for people who are going to be like, oh, well, you're actually a federal ever. I get accused of being like a liberal shill every once in a while for not like. I don't even know what. I have I have literally no clue. I'm in Abbotsford right now, helping the BC Conservatives beat David Eby and the NDP. I put my money where my mouth is. I put my effort into actually making change. And you still get people who show up and be like, well, you should have done this or that. Get off your butt. Go do something. I'm about to go do something right now to make sure we win this riding. Goodness, people. Ugh. You, you guys all watching my channel get it, though, and I, I appreciate you all. Thanks for all the help, by the way. Uh, but, you know, if you also live in BC, make sure to go into the description below and donate to the BC Conservatives, to the guy I'm helping out, Bruce Bannon, so we can get rid of the David Eby and the NDP in this province. It's an absolute wild campaign. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle, but it's very easy to win in terms of if we do the right things, it, I think it will all come together. We just got to make sure to go out there and do it. But that should be it for me today, guys. Go check out the counter signal story in the description below. Check out my gifts and go if you want the legal fund. Uh, go donate to the BC Conservatives if you can. That helps us out. We need to fight back against the legacy media, against the liberal institutions in this country. Don't don't be baited into thinking that everyone's in the pocket of the liberals. That's just not how politics works. Yes, it's a more sexy way to imagine how politics works. It's not true. Be rational and, you know, help actually make change. Don't just sit on your computer. Have a great one, guys. See you all later.